Hi folks, I know this video has nothing to do with model airplanes, but the Q-Cord is actually made by the Suzuki Corporation. Well, Mr. Suzuki's son's name is Aki, and he's the man behind the Kyosho RC Corporation. Many of you know that they mass-produced my Hyperfly Notar helicopter, so there is a weak connection. Anyway, I've always been fascinated with musical instruments that could play themselves or had no moving parts. The first one is this Euphona Player Piano. Here the cover is open so you can see how it works while I pump up the air pedals. But first, I'm going to show you some of my early and interesting digital music instruments up to today's most modern and advanced devices. First, the Casio 701. It came with two music books. Okay, you have one music book that has the uh, the song in one key, and if you flip this over to the other side, you have the music in the other the other key. One of the most amazing things is its ability to read music barcodes using this barcode reader. Okay, so the second song book, I'm just going to pick Willie Nelson here. Let's go to uh, Stardust, and I'm going to show you how this works this now becomes your reader and what you do is you read across each one of these bars when you hear that sound that means it's been received properly if you make a mistake it makes that sound And of course you can play a company along with it. I usually play my guitar because I'm not that good with the keyboards. Next came one of the most amazing synthesizers that I had ever seen. Actually it was called a vocalizer. A Breakaway Vocalizer 1000. And this thing was very cool. Uh, you would set up your tempo, your beats, piano, electric guitar, whatever you wanted, the kind of beats, rock, soul, jazz, all of this stuff up here. It had extra cartridges that you could pick and plug in and this would play different songs that would plug into the side here and that was controlled by these up here amazing thing but the cool thing was when you hummed into this mouthpiece the sound that came out of the speaker was whatever was on that you picked here you know whistling everything that you wanted to do whatever you did when you hummed into that mouthpiece and you could change your octave up and octave down by pushing these buttons while you were doing it quite an amazing unit it was a little pricey at the time I'm really glad I got it. I messed it up. If you know anybody that could fix it or anybody that has one of these, I'd like to get another one. Uh, I plugged in the wrong power supply. It worked for a little while and then I smelled the smoke and that's that. Next, I became fascinated with digital guitars. This Casio DG1 was my first. In between times, I actually had a Suzuki Digisynth, but I sold it and I wish I still had it. It was light and played really well. It's a DG1 from Casio. It's kind of a interesting guitar. And uh, you have rhythm volume and you're starting to stop with a drum beat like this. And what I did was I put strings on here that are uh, the, the wire wire strings because I didn't like the black strings. Okay, and I also like the organ sound. You can play all different kinds of sounds with this. Thing. This guitar works by pushing the string down, which in turn pushes a pressure sensitive switch down on the neck. But after 20 years, they're not always easily pushed like when new, so I got a DG10 next. Now, this one is heavy, and this notch is in the wrong place. It holds 6D batteries over here, it was the early model, very heavy. All of your uh, tuning tones here, 
mandolin, crystal, funky, whatever, your rhythms, beat, rock, pops, etc. is all over here, tempos, transposing. there was the finger drums and these are small uh, digital synthesizers also and uh, kind of neat to play with you know this is actually a uh, mouse pad your volume up and down tempo and start uh, for example like this and you can play along with it I remember when the Casio PK-1 came out. This is a quite an interesting unit for as small as it is. It was actually the, one of the first pulse code modulation PCM versions. And uh, quite amazing sound actually from this small unit. Turn it on here, you can see. And before MP3 players, there were these hit clips. I would say that probably one of the very first MP3 players that I ever saw, a portable MP3 player, came from Tiger. It was called Hit Clips. And uh, this is it. This is your earphone right here. And you had MP3 plug-in cards that you could plug in here. And when you push the play button down here, it would play. Okay, and of course you just couldn't have your mp3 player without a docking device so here comes your portable docking device and these chips just like your uh, SD cards today they just plug in like this and you hit that play button But now, from Suzuki comes one of the most amazing synthesizers I've ever owned or played. Just hand me any songbook and I can make my own arrangements. Thousands of different versions of them. It's uh, way too extensive to show you everything, so enjoy this. This is the No Moving Parts strum plate. You can tap it or strum it. It plays four different octaves of voices. This is quite an amazing synthesizer, and I'm going to show you just how this works. You can easily change these drum plate sounds, or voices as they're called, on the fly. And this is a whammy bar kind of a deal that bends the chords. The strum plate may look like it's moving here because it's sitting on the couch. I'm very lightly touching it. Nothing moves. It's solid. This is a drum fill-in. Here I'm playing song four on one of the Beatles cartridges. You can plug in uh, sound cartridges to change the beats, add to the beats, different versions. There's just unlimited things you can do with this. And boy, uh, I started making this video a while ago, but 
Uh, it's taken so long because I just keep playing and playing. Suzuki Q chord has to be one of the neatest instruments I have ever played with. Runs on C batteries, AC too. It's really hard to put down. And when you plug it into your amplifier, you cannot believe the sound. There's just too much to say and describe about it in this video. So please stay tuned for part two. I'm going to test out the newest and most controversial, neatest digital guitar I have ever seen too. I will review it and play it along with this Q chord in an upcoming video. The guitar was introduced at the CES show in Las Vegas and has just finally started shipping this month. I ordered one in February so I should be getting it soon and can't wait to introduce it to you. It will be a perfect addition to this cue chord so I can create my own interesting background music for my videos. So thanks so kindly for watching and see you at the Nitro Plains Flying Contest July 17, 2010. Make sure to see the description box below for all the details and links. Hey, that's pretty cool stuff. Let's go play some music.